here you might have an atherosclerotic disease in the distal part of the femoral or popliteal. So, your vascular lumen is compromised or totally occluded so that the blood supply to the lower part of the obstruction is not there. When the blood supply is compromised, your muscle is going to be in danger. Muscle necrosis start and if you allow the ischemia to prolong, they can be gangrene and non-healing ulcer which is called critical limb ischemia. Coming to carotid endotrectomy, here there is going to be a plaque in the carotid artery which reduces the blood supply to the brain. What you do is, you take control of the proximal and the distal part, open the carotid artery and you remove the plaque and you establish the blood flow and later suture the trend which is made over the carotid artery. That is carotid endotrectomy. Alpha 1 receptors, here it acts through GQ couple receptor. It increases the calcium release from calcium storage structures, here peripheral vascular muscle contraction leading to vasoconstriction, it can cause spiloric splinter contraction, urinary splinter contraction, also pupillary dilatation. Coming to alpha 2 receptor, it is located in the presynaptic terminal of the postganglionic neuron, pancreas, ciliary epithelium salivary glands and platelet. Here, it inhibits the release of neurotransmitter. It can produce hypotension, sedation and mild analgesia. The agonist includes clonidine and dexmetomidine and antagonist is yogambin and tolozolin. So, how you know that pulmonary artery is enlarged or not? For that, you have to take the size of iota and this is the main pulmonary artery. So, when you compare with the iota, the main pulmonary artery is slightly less than the iota. But in case of pulmonary hypertension, this is the iota and here you can see the MPA is almost twice the size of iota. So, you can compare the iota and pulmonary artery ratio to know whether the patient pulmonary artery is dilated or not. You can see the main pulmonary artery, then lobar artery, segmental artery, subsegmental artery and this is the microvasculature. So, from a size of 30 millimeter, it is coming to 0.5 millimeter in the microcirculation. And this part up to subsegmental artery, you will have fibrous clot. Here you can see the clot goes up to the level of subsegmental artery and Now, coming to the cardiovascular system, it is a natural calcium channel blocker. It counters the effect of calcium. It acts as a cofactor for sodium potassium ATPase pump. It controls the AV node conduction. Therefore, whenever magnesium level is down, that is, whenever hypomagnesemia is there, it can cause myocardial irritability resulting in dangerous arrhythmias like ventricular tachycardia and torsi de pontus. That is the reason you have to maintain a slightly higher level of magnesium whenever there is arrhythmia. Coming to the neurological system, here it depresses the central nervous system thereby producing a anticonvulsant effect. So, it is used in the treatment of seizure. Risk for thrombosis. What is the risk of thrombosis with regard to stent placement? The risk is low. That means less than 1% of thrombosis can happen. This is after 4 weeks after PCA with plain balloon angioplasty or if the duration is greater than 6 months with bare metal stent or it is greater than 1 year drug eleutic stand. Here, the thrombotic risk is going to be very low. Intermediate risk, that is between 1 to 5 percent. If the duration is greater than 2 weeks, but less than 4 weeks with plain balloon angioplasty, 
greater than one month or less than six months after bare metal stenting, or greater than six months or less than twelve months with drug eluting stent, or even after one year with complex PCA with drug eluting stent. 